Jackie Cash and Lori Kilmartin. Jackie Cash and Lori Kilmartin. It's the Jackie and Lori Show. The Jackie and Lori Show. It's the Jackie and Lori Show. The Jackie and Lori Show. Finally. Jeez. <laughs> A lot of homework on this one. Well, we're doing two. We've got to do two because you have a life to lead uh, somehow. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. And then last week, we so butchered Pallavi's name, right? To fix it. As we were trying to sound it out. And then I remembered, she's Comic of the Week. And then I remembered uh, when I did Butter Boy mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago in uh, New York. Oh, right. I was talking to the audience and I asked a woman what her name was and she wouldn't tell me. And... Then we, a few more back and forth. And the right. reason she went to tell me is she said it's Sanskrit and most white people can't say it properly. And I get tired of the back and forth. Right. And um, so that, I wish I had that on videotape because it was really fun. <laughs> oh, well. Right. Uh, she told me afterwards and she told me her name it was very short, you know, and I said it back to her and I thought I did a really great job. And, <laughs> but she didn't. She was like, nope. And then cut to uh, one week later, I, you, you and I are you both want a plugger. butchering uh, right. Pallavi's name. Yeah. If I've met her, um, I'm sure she's very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I, <laughs> all I did was watch videos online, and we didn't get a, a good sense of introduction. Right. So, That's true. There we you were go. actually copying poor introductions. How was Butterboy? Of you White Nail Comics. What? Did you have a good time at Oh, I did. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mm-hmm. love that show. Yeah, it's fun. It's uh, Marion Ways, and mm-hmm. then Aparna and Shirley used to host it every she week. She still does. And, uh, Maeve... Oh, when she's in town, she to- still hosts? Yeah, yeah. Maeve oh, good. Higgins, yeah. With uh, Irish... Maeve, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There we go, Maeve. Yeah. I don't think Maeve's been Comic of the Week. Really? I think she has. Okay. Well, well, we'll, we'll check it out, and then... Uh... Write it on that list. Okay, cool. And then, um, I just got back from Dayton... Tell me. Yesterday, and uh, Dayton, Ohio is in Ohio. You guys know that. Yeah. Uh, I got up and I said, I'm so, so happy to be here in Iowa. <laughs> and, uh, which is, well, have you Jackie, done that? You've it's done not that, like right? you're, you, if you were from the Midwest, I'd be appalled. <laughs> but <laughs> if you were from anywhere, if you had ever played Iowa <laughs> or Ohio before, I literally, I, I took a knee, made the sign of the cross, and uh, asked for forgiveness, and then uh, stood up. Four words, three syllables, mostly vowels. It's an honest mistake. Four letters. Yeah. Four letters, yes. You're right. It, it, no, no one was devastated. Mm-hmm. No, no, nobody stormed the stage and, and, and hit, lit me on fire. Right. It was actually a great show. It was really, really fun. So was it one show? Just one show. Fly to Dayton, one show. But it's kind of great doing one. Did you? That's not a theater. nonstop, right? It was not a nonstop. Yeah. I went to fly to Atlanta. Eey. And then and then um, and then back to Dayton. On the way home, it was fly to Detroit. So at least we're going in the right direction. Sure. Right? And did you up, before we even get to the show? I need to know all the flight details. <laughs> did you was upgrade? not upgraded on the way there? Okay. Was upgraded on the way back. Maria was not. Uh, the Detroit to LAX. I was upgraded. Do you think she's starting to resent you because um, you were constant upgrades? Well, in her should, face. Then she can do her own damn fourth step, can't she? <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I have this to say: is uh, um, it was so funny because I got a text from her because she was already on the plane. She goes, "Hey, did you get up? Did you get bumped up?" And I said, "I don't think so. I my flight, my um, seat number hasn't changed, and it's five A." She said, "Oh, I think." <laughs> 5A. And, oh uh, my God! Did you? Were you playing dumb, or no, did no. you actually think 5A no, was not? First no, I class? did not think it was. I, I, I did not. I, okay. Um, and then I was, bu- and then I was bumped up to 6D, which is even weirder. Oh, it was. It was very weird. Anytime and, you're in single digits on a plane, unless it's JetBlue. Well, no, no. Sometimes in in on. If the flight is smaller, but uh, a, right, but it was, I guess, a pretty big f- plane. Sure. from Detroit to L.A. Right, and um, it was so funny because Maria was like, oh, "I got you a chicken sandwich at Zingerman's, and uh, for, at, at the Detroit airport, and you didn't need it, and I didn't need it because I was given a meal." <laughs> Uh, and, and so she came and visited me about two and a half hours into the flight and said, I ate your sandwich. And I said, please eat my sandwich. I, I am going to make a controversial statement. I don't think that sober people should be allowed to be bumped up to first class where you get free booze. Do, is, are, I think are, it's incredibly unfair. I think at the least you could give your booze to somebody in economy 
Who likes to drink? Um, that's actually, there's a program for that. It's called Al-Anon. Uh, where, uh, and what you do is if you want to enable other people <laughs> to get hammered, it's, uh, that, uh, that's where you want to go. I okay. think they meet every day. All right. It's nice. You might like I'll it. I'll check it out on Points Guy or <laughs> Nina Manny's podcast. I'm sure she'll tell me about it. I'm kind of obsessed with Nina Manny's podcast now. Oh, you should be. I um, can't get that into Points, but I love it when people are really into something that and I yet you into. do not listen to the dark forest. I, I love have, it when people are really into something. But it's like, there's just like 20 minutes long. Oh, that is nice. They're in and they're yeah. out. Well, I, I, I recorded two episodes the other day and I had to tell both people, I was like, it, we're turning it off now. We're, uh, we're turning off the recording process. Just to, and to further, I've only listened to two of them. That to mm-hmm. me is really liking a podcast. Oh, okay. If I've listened to two, to two, to do two episodes of a podcast. That, yeah. That's I'm like, you. I'm hooked. Hey, everybody and who I listens might never to listen this, to good it for again. you. Good for you for <laughs> sticking it out. Matter of fact, uh, I was talking to, uh, a- a- well, Andy was talking to Sean Elliott. I always feel like I'm sort of talking to his to his friends when he's talking to his friends. Mm-hmm. You, you ever listen to someone talking on a, on, on a phone call and you get information <laughs> that, that they wouldn't tell you? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's just sort of a secondary, you're like, what, what, what? what? Yeah. Oh, your work's going real good. Oh, good to know. And uh, it was kind of fascinating. Yeah. But he's talking so to his other buddy. people might have deeper friendships with Andy than they have with you. Is that I, what you're ex- right? Or Andy your might have with me. Oh, or I, I, <laughs> like I'm not like maybe oh, I'm not from, listening from Andy yeah. telling somebody. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was his friend. I'm like that makes sense. Why would his friend confide in you? No, no. You're a- saying you're Andy's telling something your life to partner. his buddy. Yes. yes. Okay. He's telling something to his buddy Sean Elliott, and I was like. Oh, good. Things mm-hmm. are going well. Okay, and uh, that's not ideal. And uh, but um, but Sean Elliott was saying how he likes this show. He was like, you know, about a year ago, I realized that you weren't going to kill each other, and I'm still interested <laughs> in listening. So yeah, that's what he said. I'm still interested in listening. Wow. So I'll there take you go. It. Yeah. Me too. So Dayton was amazing, actually. It was one of those big theaters, uh, like a 450. Mm. Well, I think it probably sat 600, but they just started doing stand-up at that theater oh. and and sort of one-off music. So they were like, nobody's nobody's been filling it. But by ne- wow. this time next year, everybody should be. And people drove from different parts, like their two-hour drive oh my from God. Cincinnati and two-hour drive from Indianapolis and two-hour drive. Dayton, I guess, is in the middle of... Yeah, it's a good place to it's, it's be located as yeah. a stand-up mm-hmm. for, if you're going to do road work for you know a couple of years. You know what I mean? Right. It's yeah, it's one of those kind it's of places. Centrally, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and is there a funny bone? A Dayton funny there bone? There was right now? weirdly enough. There's there is a go bananas in Dayton. In no, Dayton. that's in no 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 that's in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah. Okay, well, what a bunch of comics came to the show, and then we're talking to us after. And I think it was Wiley's. Wiley's was one. Is it still open? Something's still happening. There was a there was a show that was all women that night, mm-hmm. and it was it was just um, I think it was, on the night that you Maria, yeah, oh my yeah. God. which uh, um, was a little conflicting, and because um, yeah. we were going to try to go to it, but then Maria, you know, when when there's one show. She does a full on meet and greet if she can, yeah. you know, because if there's two shows, it's too, you gotta prep too for tiring. The next show. Right. Yeah. You got to prep for the next show and, and, and even and second show you're tired. Yeah. So, um, but she did the full meet and greet and it was super fun. And, um, and I sold absolutely every piece of merch that I brought. I didn't bring oh, that much merch because wow. it was a one nighter. Right. Uh, and I didn't, and sometimes theaters uh, charge a cut yeah and i and so when they charge a cut i have to charge more money for the the stuff i'm selling wow so and i only brought pins i brought spooky reading girl pins mm-hmm. i bought meat shield pins um i'm already at 750 towards the next uh donation thousand dollar donation and uh so i sold and people like pin that still mystifies me <laughs> the uh the enamel pin mm-hmm. it's the super bowl of 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 adulthood okay it lasts as long as it lasts okay anyway um so yeah it was but the uh i got uh i, I recorded which is great mm-hmm. because i got some things right and i love it when i get some things right now mm-hmm. if i would just listen to it and i know do some that's the worst part it's like yeah. oh i think i know what i said that's exactly what I said to myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had probably the most 
uh, dissatisfying week I've had in a long time. Yeah, there was some journey in the text group. You were like, okay, I've shown up to another show that has got some problems. Well, okay. First of all, number one, pro- this is this is going. You know, this is being dropped later than, of course, we recorded. Right. This it. is not tomorrow. We're recording this the day before so, one that we've already done. Uh, broken ribs, Magoo over here oh, is right. <laughs> incredibly needy. Right, your I'm, mama. Right. I'm trying. I'm just always trying to find someone to come watch her for a few hours. You know, and um, and that's taking up time. I miss. This sounds dumb, but I have. Very, I have a very little windows in the day where I can just be at peace and get myself together. Right. Didn't get to swim because I had to find someone to take her to the doctor's office. Right. And then she goes, I'll just cancel it and get an appointment tomorrow morning and you can take me. Oh, during the next swim I'm going to miss? Okay. Right. By the way, in Burbank, they have something called uh, the Burbank bus. And yeah. once you're a senior and you're signed into it, yeah. they pick you up. They take you wherever you need to go in Burbank, and then they drop you back off. You just have to make a reservation in advance. Yeah. And all my mom's had to do for the last three years is fill out one form and hand it to a doctor to sign and then take care of it. And she's never, she's never done it. So, so I'm angry. I'm just uh, angry. Right, right. Yeah, right? Yeah. I'm angry and depressed. Yeah, yeah. My kid isn't here. And um, so now. That's right. He's, on, he's with his grandmother, right? Right. Yeah. He's, he's in uh, Texas. Texas. And taking. Taking care of an old person versus taking care of a kid, while they're similar demands in a way, yeah. it's it's such a different feeling. <laughs> right, it's a different vibe. It's like, oh, here's I'm taking care of somebody who's growing, who's who's becoming more and better and bigger and and full of potential and something I can watch and and enjoy. You're not the hero of the story. No, I keep digging. And now <laughs> I'm taking so. care of somebody who's breaking, mm-hmm. who's uh who's becoming smaller, who's listening to only Rush Limbaugh. I'm like, you know what I mean? Like everything's descending and she's getting closer and closer to the earth, which will come take her soon right. or not soon because of fucking modern medicine. Right? Right. right. And I probably can't make this house any bigger. Right. So now it's like, okay, so this weekend I'm like, oh, I got to do something. So I, I, I re I decluttered my son's room. That was right. huge. Yeah. It, it looks now great. looks like a real room. Yep. Right. So he can actually maybe go in there and not and sleep trash in it. my bed all the time. Right. And wake me up seven times a night by right. kicking me. Okay. My mom's room, I just pushed her bed to the wall, like literally together three Where more feet away from me. Is she in there? Is she in the house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see her. <laughs> no, she's she's just... Uh, she's got headphones on. She's a she's tinfoil like, hat. She she's goes, doing the it. doctor told me you're supposed to rest. What else do you do all day? Right. That's all you do. Right. Okay. So... So that so I did, so I'm doing like the the minimum I can do to make my house feel bigger. Yeah, and me, me not feeling like everything's just coming at me all the time. Right, right. So I, I did a little bit of that, and um, comedy. So I was supposed to go to a wedding this weekend, which right. we didn't go In to Chicago. because yeah. she didn't want to be left alone. Right. Right. So I didn't book any spots. You know. So right. I, I mean, I had some spots, and then uh, th- this week, like either I didn't have much. And the ones I did were three people in the audience, yeah. two, com- two were comics, or one was a comic yeah. and two left. <laughs> and then last night, I was like, why am I alive? Why am I in show Uh-oh. business? And it was like in a pub. And again, everyone means, well, I know it's hard to promote a show and stuff like right. that. I get I, I, I don't get do it because I don't do it. Right. I can't do it. So, so God so, bless them for trying. Go- thank you. Yeah. But... Um, it, it, there were just like a huge group of people that would not stop talking and comics were like you could see the life draining from people's eyes while they were on stage right doing they were jokes. just sweating it out yeah, yeah just going I guess this counts as a spot in my <laughs> goal of 100 spots this month or something right right right, right. Um, and I was like then I just started going over all the comics who I'm the same age as who oh. are uh, probably not ever going to be doing this kind of thing again <laughs> Well, right. Here's the and thing. then I was like, "Why did I? Why am I still doing this? Why am I pursuing something I've been pursuing since I was 22? I haven't changed. Like, what am I? What's the point?" And Gary Gary Goldman is out there with a new fucking hour, and it's a, it's like being taped for HBO, and I have maybe one new thing. Right. I I, I feel like I'm not writing enough, and. I just feel like a lower right. level B act in well, in in the realm of stand up comedy, you know. You're just and then, 
there's financial things that I'm sure will have been cleared up by the time <laughs> this thing drops. But right now we're still wide open, and I'm like, uh, uh, uh. Okay. right. Okay, so this ledge that you are on, right, is very, very narrow. <laughs> it's not an un, it's not an unusual ledge, though. I mean, mm-hmm. if you think about it, this is a ledge that we're all on every couple of years. Every couple of years, you look at your career, or I have anyway. Mm-hmm. I look at my career and I'm like, well, look at that fucking dude, and uh, why don't I have that? And why do I, you know, it's it's one of those things where you just end up beating yourself up, and and if you have a bad week. Mm-hmm. Which you do sometimes. You have a bunch of sets that are that are open mics, and and it's just a bunch of comics not caring, or you cannot get any of your new jokes to work. You can't get any of the words to work, mm-hmm. and or have you ever like a drought of writing where you're like, I'm so sick of my act, I could just die. Mm-hmm. And it's that is this is you've had this before, right? Mm-hmm. This is a recurring thing, so mm-hmm. you know that this will pass. This is not the be- this is not the end of your career. This isn't even the middle of your career. This might be the middle of your career. I mean, you're 30 <laughs> years in. Uh, so, I mean, how long? <laughs> We're going to live to be 100. And uh, so um, our birthdays are coming up. Right. right? And, um, but it's, it's, I mean, the th- but I, I know what you're saying with, because I think about comics our age and the thing the opportunities that they have and the things that they do and the attention that they put on it right and some of it they have the time Mm -hmm. they have the time you don't have any of that time you're constantly taking care of 19 other people and how did i get into this situation why am i not jen kirkman she's childless living (laughs) the child why am i not jackie cation well because you, know? you aren't. But the thing is, is the only person that you love right now, Sarah Silverman, is your son. Right. You're Sarah's- not. You're not going to throw him away. No. He is. He is often angry at you as well, right? Because he is twelve. <laughs> yes. Correct. Uh, did I not see re- some art? You are uh, referring to. <laughs> he. I gave him one of our notebooks. Oh Christ! We'll Sorry, just, I owe you eight dollars yeah, for uh, that. Well, I sold two of ours, so okay. why don't we call it a uh, great? I think I, I get. I profit from this uh, interaction. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a there's a picture of me and Jackie on our notebook, and uh, he um, he did a thought bubble for you where you're saying. <sighs> This woman has to pay me to be her friend. This is so brutal. And then with me, and he drew tears coming out of your eyes. Uh, and then with me, he he made my uh, eyebrows really demonic, like um, like I'm a Vulcan, right? And then I forget what I was saying on it, but it was oh, some, I don't. Oh, oh, it was something like um, people only listen to me. I, I you're spent- yelling. It's all about yelling. <laughs> And um, where did you put? The, oh, I think you put it on the the text thread. Yeah, but but and then he he, he crossed out the words on our on and the put cover yelling and, again. Right. So in other words, you are clearly frustrated and doing some yelling. But it's like it's sort of like one of those situations where you can't like there's there. It's so funny that he thinks that you're yelling all the time when he's literally the only person you like right now. <laughs> And, and I uh, know that because it was when I yelled at him one time, like he, if I yell at him once, there, he draws seven comic books about, about his horrible yelling mother. <laughs> like, dude, you don't even know what I'm not doing to you. Right, right. I it's could a, be doing to you. Exactly. Legally. I'm not just saying, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty chill about a lot of shit. Okay? Right, right. It's, um, right. So you're, so he's all scared because you yelled at him once and he made this art, yes. which is hilariously dark. And also you're just like, oh, and, uh, but you yelled at him once. And, um, and so, yeah. So what I'm saying is that, is that you have, you have this situation in your life and there's no way I am trapped. I go to, I, I don't know how you now. This is where I'm going to dig my hole. Okay. I don't understand why she doesn't live in, a, in an assisted living home. Have you seen assisted living homes? I've seen nice ones. Those are expensive. Okay. And, uh, and she didn't make a big bag of money when she sold her San Francisco home? Jackie, I'd like part of it. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> well, 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 If I well. play my cards right, there's a little bit of an inheritance from the house. <laughs> oh, I will fuck. be splitting it with my sister. But yeah. Okay. If she goes to a home, she's going to spend it all. She should spend it all. Because think about this. Hmm. If she lasts another 10 years. Oh, my God. If she lasts another three years. 
Which, by the way, you might have a better relationship with her if she didn't live in your goddamn house. I, it might be I'm worth the money, is what I'm saying. Sister and myself a great favor. You really are by, you know, by not by not spending all that money that uh, could go to her grandchildren. Who cares? Everybody should get a job. And uh, this is, I mean, granted, I come from no money right. and no inheritance. And my father, who still works for a living at the age of 82, right. 83. Uh, but the thing is, is so there's, but I would say for your sanity, you might want to take under advisement that she might, she might need help, more help than you can well, provide. When she gets to the point where she physically needs help. Well, this. if she like, can't be is, alone, this is she, just temporary because it's broken ribs. Okay, uh, but what, what I'm saying is that uh, you also, in this last year, lost uh, the babysitter, so you don't even have someone to pick up that slack anymore. No. Well, so you right. might want to. I mean, here's the thing: she she allows me to do spots because my kid is still too young to be left alone at night. He doesn't like it. He gets right. scared. No, no, he doesn't like it. She right. doesn't like. Nobody wants to be alone. They want you to be there yelling at them. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> even though you're so, not so it's still but it's starting to be you know he'll be 14 15 and then not need uh, an 80 83 year old at the house no, no i'm saying that you could also instead of uh assisted living you could hire someone to come into the house more like your nanny used to well she did she never but she was here with the boy yeah but she, she helped never him with homework yeah. you, could, you could hire someone to ostensibly to tutor no, I want to do that actually. Well, because I no, feel like I'm I lost you control. You need help. Okay. No, listen. but if you don't want help, I can I can undo. I can no. I can just back off. What I'm saying is, you're great. You're doing great. No, no, no. It, it. Have you been listening to Max Fun for a while, and you've just been wondering where's the new Flat Earth podcast I keep hearing about? Well, here it is. We give you all the facts on NASA's lies and how we know that the Earth is actually flat. Just, Just kidding. kidding. <laughs> this is Ono, Ross, and Carrie, and we join fringe religious groups. We undergo alternative medical treatments. And we hang out with people like 9-11 truthers, flat earthers. We find out why do people believe strange things. We join them, and we tell you all about it. We have a lot of fun. We make a lot of friends. Yeah, we do. We joined the Mormons. We joined the Scientologists. We got acupunctured. We got fire cupped. We got ear candled. We've done it all, and we're going to keep doing it all. Why don't you check out Ono, Ross, and Carrie at MaximumFun.org? completely um, derail in a an assisted living. She's not an assisted living type of person. Anytime she's even had to do rehab in a nursing facility, it's you know get me get me out of here, get me out of here. So she, as uh, cranky as she is, she's doing way better than if she were living alone, right? And she and even up in the Bay Area, there's no place for her to live really. She wants to be near her grandchildren, right? Um. So it's either me or my sister. Yeah. And it's, it's not my sister. and Because I actually do need the uh, assist on, you know, babysitting and stuff like that. But when my son isn't here and it's just me and her, I'm so depressed. Right. Yeah. And, um, and quite honestly, me offering solutions is not what you needed. You just needed to vent. Mm-hmm. And what are we, 20 minutes in? We're doing great? 22. 22. <laughs> so, so we, I mean, the thing is, is so what's this, what's this week's stand-up going to be? Because um, this will drop, what, the 17th? So you'll be, you'll be in New York. You don't have for, to, just, I was venting. Yeah, no, no. And, and I didn't need to offer solutions. Right. Uh, unsolicited. Right. So I, that's what, that's what okay, I, I'm saying okay. is that it, I know, but you still were like, so let's flip, turn this around and find out where you're working. No, no. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking, uh, you could, uh, oh, if you'd like to vent more. No, so I sorry. have more things that depress me this week. Oh, fair enough. Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> Check. It wasn't even done. We're halfway through. Okay. So there was this New York times article. Okay. So a couple, maybe like two months ago. Yes. A freelancer for the New York times called and said, I'm doing an article on. Uh, women who've been pregnant and stand, done stand up. Oh, okay. I'm like, ah, I've Fine. done that. You did that. Sure. So I talked to her for like a half hour, give yep. her names, etc. Oh, yeah. So the article comes out. I'm not in it. Some of the names I gave her are. Okay. Uh, I'm not in it. 
Right. That was frustrating, but I'm like, yeah, oh, whatever. Right. Okay, that's fine. Then I get uh, an email from a, another person freelancing. Yeah. She says, I'm doing an article about sex workers and stand up comedy. Okay. And I'm like, hmm, that's, um, well, I'm, I'm not, not, I'm not, I'm not that. <laughs> I'm interested in your story, particularly. I'd like to talk about Stormy Daniels. Oh, okay. So you want to talk about only two tweets? Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. I already that. got left out of an article that I'm completely qualified <laughs> to be in. I don't want to be in an article I have nothing to do with. Right. Right. It's excellent point. And uh, so I just said no thanks. And she goes. And she says, "I'm like, oh, I totally understand." I'm like, "No, you don't totally understand. But it, you don't have to understand. You it's don't just, have to understand. We just have. To I just be done don't want to. I just don't want to be That's quoted it. or misquoted." Well, <laughs> she took like it seemed like my tweet about Stormy was the foundation of her article oh. about how some people are against it, against sex workers and comedy. Doing stand up. Right. No. no. What? So that was that was really frustrating. Where was this article? I it missed was in the New York one. Times. And, also and I'm like, oh, Times. it'll just be online. Oh, it was in the print edition too. someone. So your name was in that article. Yeah. All over it. Yeah. Yeah. The and now you... I look like I'm fucking anti sex worker. Again. Again. Right. And uh and grumpy old comic, which yeah, I am. <laughs> I've got a lot of reasons to be grumpy. Right. This is not the this is not the week not to be. This is <laughs> you know what? You're gonna take this comedy gold. Yeah. You don't know. But I mean, I'm not anyone can, I don't I don't mind anyone could be a comic. All you yeah. have to do is, is dedicate do your life to it for 10 years at least. <laughs> right. That's all you have to do. <laughs> That's all you have to do. And it doesn't right. matter where you come from or what you talk about as long or as you're your funny. what's your day job is. Yes, I don't care. I don't care what I'm going to make fun of you because you drive a lift. I'm not going yeah. gonna, to. I'm going to make fun of you because you have sex for money. I'm not going to. No. And and it reminded me because I never thought of Margaret Cho as a sex worker, but she, she used to do she did phone sex like when okay. she was oh, eighteen, that's right. which sounded. But I remember just going, wow, because I would watch it. She was eighteen, nineteen. I was twenty one or something, yeah, and watch her talking about it at the Holy City Zoo, and I'd be like, oh, that's crazy. Like I wouldn't even know what to say. Right. But I mean, there, no, there had to be a script. No, I, well, I forget her bit. Okay, but I mean, it's oh, you were oh from the bit. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm just watching. Oh, just watching her act, and so I don't know. It, it's not like new to me, and it's I. I really every voice is interesting to me, right? As long as you're writing good jokes. Yeah, yeah. Bring it, please. I'm right. so tired of the same people complaining about the same thing. I'd love right. to hear uh, somebody talk it, complaining about having like 10 dicks on them this d- today and they're tired. Right. Whoa. That's, I'm in on this joke. Right there. That's, Let that's me know. the greatest premise What's it in the like world? to have an exhausted <laughs> vagina? I've never had that. Please tell me. Like, I want to know. So, right. I was really pissed that I was drawn into that. Yes. You know, and I thought the blowback would be similar to the original situation. Yeah. But uh, it wasn't. So I don't know that many people. Uh, I didn't. I did not see that one. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Oh, good. Um, but I was pissed at that writer. But, sure. Because, why not? And, and she, her background is writing about like sex and stuff. So it's not. You're not getting a stand up or a stand. Uh, anyone interested in stand up comedy writing about it? The right. real story, if you want a real story, is uh, female headliners in comedy clubs. And is that happening? And and uh, you know, how right. many clubs, how many male club owners would much rather have a porn star in yes. than a female? headliner I, in their comedy club. right a comic who's been doing it for 15 to 25 years right so it's true you know um but that's not the angle this person was coming at and i didn't trust her when i looked at her bio <laughs> i was like no thanks i don't want this exactly <sighs> what else what else has been happening hold on i wrote notes <laughs> <laughs> thank god um yeah i i think that you know it's. I even feel like you're doing. You're going through a lot of growth right now, you know. And you're like, you know, galloping. You're galloping ahead in terms of like new stuff. And and I'm like, I I feel because a lot of my almost all of my act is based on what's happening in my life. Right. I'm not an observational comic. Right. Right. I don't like talking. And you're not about- much of a. I mean, you, the you write um, surgically, like you write uh, very short bits. And I tend to write, I mean, it's a clock eater. You want to watch me, you can listen to me do meander around 12 minutes. But, but even, even topics wise, 
I'm like, why aren't I, you know, writing about, uh, you know, everything that's going on, you know, oh, so- socio political stuff? Yes, anything. Yeah. And I don't know when I do it, whenever I even try it, it sounds like I'm lecturing to uh, me. That's how right, I right. feel. And it's not why I got up on stage. Right. So and so you, it's still not, not why it. I got, you know, I guess yeah. it's not like, oh, I should, you know, pivot and be a different kind of comic. But I know my true core, core comedy self mm-hmm. is I is what I feel where I feel funny and where I where I'm yeah. happy when a joke works is when I've taken whatever these feelings are in my real life. Yeah. You know, that are things that are happening to me. And th- now that could, writ large, that might be socio socio political in terms yeah. of women in the world and mothers in the world and yeah. you know, whatever in the world. I mean, you could pull it out that way if you wanted to, but that's, I, I, I can't, I don't want to look at, at, a headline on USA Today or something and go and then develop a chunk around it. I just yeah. can't do it. I've never, I've never done that. Like right. all of my sociopolitical stuff, there is, um, like the way I'm introing the, the sort of the, the dirtbag joke is about the bad dudes of the world. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it starts from a big place, but it has to become personal almost immediately. Right. Yeah. And, you could do that. I mean, the thing is, is, but you tend to start with something that's super personal. Have mm-hmm. you ever thought about making it bigger from that? I don't even know how to get into it. Right. It'd be, yeah. But the, I mean, the thing is, you can't, the, the, I mean, this is a classic, is you can't write anything but what you write. Right. Stand-up mm-hmm. wise. And there's, there's no, there's no way to force it to change the way you write. I mean, the best you've done is to write monologue jokes for late night. Mm-hmm. That is you forcing a different direction. Yeah, right? and I'm writing for somebody else. And so you're writing fine. for something else, so it doesn't even... I mean, there, it, it, you can... Uh, there's got to be an audience for somebody who's, um, like, kind of funny, but not hilariously <laughs> funny, about liberal <laughs> politics. <laughs> Wait... <laughs> There's 30,000 comics that are doing that right now. I don't want, because the thing is, is you're saying, you're saying it in ways that I don't want to put names on that. But there's, 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 are you kidding me? It's like, there's that guy, there's, um, there's, uh, that woman, there's, um, there's, uh, Is that my name? (laughs) Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, and well, those are both very, very funny people yeah. who are sociopolitical, liberal leaning, and talking about on it. Twitter. On, no, no, on, on stage. stage as well. Yeah, and so the thing is, is that's happening. The, so what, what, what don't you want about <laughs> about the thing is, is my, my material has always been sociopolitical, left lean. Like no one's ever going has ever been surprised mm-hmm. since nineteen eighty four. That I am a, a crystal clutcher, left leaning hippie skippy, um, but it has never been like I had one joke where I mentioned George Bush by name, George uh, W. Bush, and it was a fingering joke. So uh, know in your heart that uh, there's nothing how I mean, you wanted to be fingered by him. I always thought that was an odd fantasy. That is an odd fantasy. Just sort of bringing it out there. <laughs> What a! It was such a dumb. I. Do you ever look back? Well, I look back on the way I named certain tracks, mm. um, on the, the album, and I'm like, why would you have called it that? It's such a weird. It wasn't even. I think that's what I called it on my set list, mm. which is yeah, so yeah, different. Yeah. From how it should be oh, titled. How a joke gets its its name, and then it then the, the joke track? like one year later has nothing to do with the joke's name. Right, and no one would know if they if they stumbled upon your notebook afterwards what joke. You what were the hell about. you were? What bit you were doing? Yeah, and so I look at some of the old track listing, going, "What did you do?" And I just I'm I I loathe I lo- like circus people has I decided instead of saying the word family that I would put the word B family. For, I never. Saw safe family like that there's absolutely no it's the lamest thing i've ever done in my whole life it's Hmm. dumb it's not good d-u-m-b or (laughs) (laughs) d-u-m i don't know jackie i'm back you're back excellent so but but okay so sarah silverman she wrote a memoir a while ago right right what has she done lately though huh (laughs) she's doing a musical 
Wait, she's going to sing? No, she's writing a musical. Okay, thank you. Uh, what nope. I'm saying... <laughs> Not out loud. What just happened? I don't know what's happening. I don't know how she sings. I don't know why I would judge her singing. Next. Yeah, she probably sings fine. Yeah, she People that sings. like musicals can usually sing pretty well. That's why they like musicals. They sing along to them in the car. Okay. This seems sweeping, but I don't think so. <laughs> But my point is, is she's she's like a couple years younger than us. OK, right? you and me, we're still like hoping for a Netflix special from from Except a, for not a, since I heard what they do. I don't want a Netflix special. Do you hear about that? Where I wouldn't even you, care anymore. Well, because they own the next hour and a half. Good luck getting another hour and a half from me. I'll be 80 <laughs> when I come up with a new hour and a half. <laughs> oh, it's a, this is a plateau. You're going to be fine. <sighs> I know. It's anyway, depressing. but Go the ahead. the and then and then I'm like, is the exposure amazing? Like, I'd love to talk to. There's some people that I like Here's had a a, Net, a Netflix special where I'm like, did it do anything? Like, I can't tell if it did anything, right? Um, I don't even know who that is. Oh, so that's a problem. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> that's you're right. Yeah. That didn't help that person at all. Right. And so and so th- am I wasting a lot of energy and yes. angst hoping for that? <laughs> you are absolutely. <laughs> yes, you are. But uh, the peanut gallery. But is here's the thing. So like but it's your energy this so. week. So Christella posted this really cool post about how, you know, she's she's did Conan after 10 years of stand up and it led to this. And she never she never got new faces. She never got any of the things that everyone thinks you're supposed to get and all the things that comics are going for when they're starting out. I saw and that. she still got a TV show based off of her Conan set after right. 10 years. And you quote tweeted and you're like, well, I didn't get mine till I was 28 years in, but we're all in our own journey. <laughs> I did. And That's I, exactly what I said. But because you, I didn't go, uh, I auditioned for uh, JFL yeah. for 15 years. And then somebody finally explained to me in 2002 that it was a, um, a, uh, that racket. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that it was, a um, that, that, Initially, the Aspen Comedy Festival was about characters. And yeah. if you had jokes that were, were characters, you should do those because that was casting. And if you had uh, a development idea, you should do that for uh, Montreal. And so in 2002, I did a set. Someone told me that. I did a set that was a wacky, hey, my parents move in with me set. Yeah. <laughs> and I got freaking JFL. I got just for laughs the hmm. next year. It hmm. didn't make any sense. Right. And uh, But I had been auditioning for it since 93, if not 90. Wow. Wait, I don't know how long it had been around, but um, long time. Yeah. And many years, you know, they just, the thing is, is all of those, those, Christelle is a perfect example of screw but, the gatekeepers. Right. Yeah. But also your, what you wrote broke my heart at the same time. Oh, because you know it I mean? took so long to get a late night set? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when when uh, Conan gave me that, when, when JP gave me that set on Conan, uh, it was 2013, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going around working the set, right? Right. And uh, I did Meltdown. I did a work-in. I was like, can I just get a five-minute work-in? And, um, and Emily was like, wait, you've never done late night? And I was like, no, no, I, I did a Comedy Central. I've done uh, late Friday, and uh, so like <laughs> oh I did God. all the shitty. The one you know. that Henry Cho hosted? No, it was I did. Maybe, maybe it was Henry Cho. I don't know. There was music over my set. Did you do that one? Was that the one Lisa Langang booked? No, no, that was uh, that was uh, fr- that was something else that was also late Friday. Yeah, but that was uh, no, no. The one with music was not the one Lisa Langang. The one that Lisa you would Langang, remember of Henry Cho. Would- no, I don't know Henry Cho. Yeah, you know Henry Cho, right? I know of Henry Cho. I've never, I don't think I've met Henry Cho. Okay. So, um, but. John Lee Bowen Lee Stewart. No. Nope. Right. Is that a quote? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, <laughs> one of his bits. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. W- but the thing is, is so there was some, grat- I have to say that there was some gratification that everyone was so shocked that I had not done uh, a late night set right on any of the and i had auditioned for all of them for for the two guys who booked uh uh leno 
Oh yeah, Bob Mark and, and Ross and Mark, right? Bob, Mark, Ross. They all had four. They had they three had and four, a half first, uh, names. first names. Yeah. yeah, they had three and a half first names. <laughs> and um, Jim and Bob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I auditioned for Letterman several times. Got nothing. Mm-hmm. I auditioned for um, yeah, Leno and Letterman. I did all of them. It was uh, Eve Kimmel. Uh, I did a Kimmel Carson, set. Carson Daly. Wow. Um, yeah. All of, I literally, if there was if there was a set, I was like, sure, I'll put something together. Yeah. And but there's part of me, like for example, I haven't I haven't sent uh, Jessica Pilot another set for. Uh, I know I haven't Colbert. either. Right, right, right. I haven't sent JP another set. I haven't gone through. Um, I haven't gone through the twenty. I have twenty three new hours. I did four hours, and now I am back up to twenty three hours of stand up oh, that listening. I have not yeah. listened to. So. Part of it is I'm I'm not doing the work, right? I mean, that's where, you know, where whenever I feel like there, I'm being dismissed and I'm not being uh, valued. Yeah. Uh, whenever I think that, I am like, okay, that is probably true. I am being dismissed and not valued. Yeah, but am I doing everything I could do? Tr- true, true, true. But there's also what's happening to some comics, which might not be happening to you or me, is like. Uh, hey, I want you to do my show. Give, show me a set. So oh, you're right, right. not. So they're like reaching out and asking you to do. A girl likes to be asked. Definitely. It's, true. It, and, it's uh, harder when you're just blindly putting together five minutes and yeah. going, okay, now I'm going to email it to this person and then never yeah. hear from them again and not know if I they know. watched it, what the problem was, etc. Right. That's what I. My favorite thing about JP is that. And the, he may not be doing this for everyone, but but I know he does it for a lot of comics mm-hmm. where he'll he'll send back feedback that just says, this is a good joke. Um, if you picked one joke out of my 10 minute set, other other late night bookers, um, I would build a set around that joke. If I send you a five minute set or a 10 minute, whatever amount of set, and you liked one of those jokes or your people liked one of those jokes or somebody liked one of those jokes, Mm -hmm. I could then build a set around that. So you do need the feedback. The feedback's super important. Yeah. But, um, but whatever. Yeah. Cause I, I sometimes, you know, like you do, you feel dismissed and belittled and like you're banging your head against the door and your head hurts. And Yeah. All I think sometimes is I'm banging my head against the right door. I'm, it's I picked the fucking door. That's the good news. Yeah, this is the door that I picked to bang my head against. I know. Like last night after that set at the in front of yeah the, uh, just a crowd, people. and then yeah. by that time, oh, the, by the, the time rowdy. I was up, the crowd had left, but yeah. it was so depressing, and it was just the comics that were left basically. Yeah. And um, you know, it was like Saturday night, and I was like. I was like, I'm not even going to look at the comedy store lineup because I'll shoot myself. Oh, right. right? Um, <laughs> Felicia Michaels t- uh, tweeted it today. Oh, she did. And she was the only woman on this on this list. On Saturday? No, for tonight, I think, or oh. for a, a, a show that's upcoming. And I was okay. like, and I almost said something and I was like, nah, I don't want to rain on her parade. I don't oh, want to yeah. go. No, no, yeah, no. I didn't. I didn't want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, it's sort of like Karen Rontowski being the only woman that Eddie Brill booked that one year, <sighs> where you're like, well, I don't want to belittle Karen Rontowski at all because she's a, an amazing. And also, comic. Eddie Brill's not in power anymore. It's a lot easier to, right? You know, we to to expect you to. Or I don't know. It's. It, <sighs> We just want our spots, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Hey, speaking of which, let's do a Max Fun Spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm Aneke. And I'm James. And together, we are the self-proclaimed wonder twins of podcasting and host Minority Corner. We tackle subjects like LGBTQ topics, pop culture. And untold histories of American POCs, like the true story of escaped slave turned pirate turned Navy man in the Civil War turned congressman Robert Smalls. Plus current events from our perspective. Deep dive movie and TV reviews. You'll also get awesome book recommendations from their neighborhood friendly librarian. Don't forget my award-winning Jennifer Hudson impressions. And I'm telling you. While never taking ourselves too seriously. Minority Corner. Because together. We're the majority. Every Friday here on Maximum Maximum Fun. Fun. And we're back, you guys. Uh, Is it time for Comic of the Week, do you think? 
42. Good, we're doing two today, so. Jacqueline Novak needs no introduction, but let's introduce her. She's so funny. She's so funny. Her name's Jacqueline Novak. Yes. J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E. That's how I spell my name. Mm-hmm. Novak, N-O-V-A-K. Like Kim Novak. Like Kim Novak. Of the and Hitchcock movies. Of Oh, right, of from uh, Showbiz. Is she related, do you think? I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. Who knows? I don't think Novak's an uncommon name. Right, right. And uh, But I know that um, she's really funny. The three sets, I've seen her live talk about other things, but the three sets that I watched on TV were all food related, which you know I was what? like, I love, I mean, if you're going to talk about, like, I Tim Allen loves to fucking talk about tools, man. Right. To this day. W- women, uh, that should be our thing. Honestly. <laughs> the food I'm, I'm thing tired of to... men talking about food. Gaffigan, We're the ones that are fucking it. insane about it. Okay, right. let you us have us it. nuts. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, but Jacqueline Novak, She's very funny, funny. And she has a one-person show that I haven't seen, oh, yeah? but everyone is, like, raving about it. And On Broadway? And she is in headed to Broadway. She's okay. In, She's still workshopping it, but I think she has like a line, uh, like a run at the Cherry Lane Theater. If I'm correct, is it a stand-up hour or yeah, is it like a solo show? It's a solo. Uh, you know what? That's up there to might be the critics arc. to decide. Oh, I guess enough. I'm sure there's a little bit right. of each. I hope she, uh, yeah, whatever she calls it, that's what it is. Yeah, it turns she's out super funny. Um, so check awesome. her out. Um, so she is the comic of the week. Mm-hmm. This week I am here. I believe. Um, this will be the seventeenth, I think, right. and I am going to learn how to do Pilates. Oh, I ain't never done no Pilates. You'll like it, and it's supposed to be good for physical therapy for stretching and stuff. Sure. And are you still that, rolfing? No, no. I I finished my the one rolfer, and then I went to the new rolfer, and it didn't take. Mm. So uh, Maybe I might you go didn't back. Like that rolfer? No, I liked her. Um, she was good. She just didn't want to do a series. Mm. I could have insisted, I suppose. <laughs> well, um, wait, she doesn't want money? What kind I know, of I thought, a rolfing thought, business is this? I know. I thought that was, I found that uh, fascinating. Mm. And, um, but she was, uh, yeah, she was, she was great. I, yeah. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going to do sets around town. I think I'm doing the ripped bodice. Oh, this nice. week i love that set yeah i love that place um oh the other thing that happened this week was okay first of all i said yes to a show that wasn't stand-up oh and i didn't realize that till that afternoon was it panel or something no no no. i it was a fun show oh good but i i it, you know me you I just want like to do a set i just want to do a set right yeah i don't want to do fun shows <laughs> <laughs> i don't want, i just want to do stand-up right um especially this week because oh, so right. many you were unsatisfying like, or zero right. stand-up. Right, right. I'm just at home with with an old woman. Yeah, right. It's it's Wednesday so night depressing. here in Burbank. There's a place called Geeky Tees. I like that open mic. Oh, it's a it's a you get a bottle of water and it's in the back of a game. I know where Geeky Tees is. I didn't know they had an open mic. Yeah, on Wednesdays, as Mark Fernandez and Dan Telfer were there the last time. Oh, and his his uh, Dan's buddy. Uh, it's not Thea. What, uh, yeah, Thea, who who runs the lyric show with him? I think maybe. Yeah. Um, is it Thea, though? I, yeah, I, I don't, feel like I don't it's pronounced something thing, else though. some other way. Oh, Taya? But, is it, it might be Taya. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, Listen, once, like, Thea, Thea Vidal is in my head so much that it's hard to switch up the pronunciation. <laughs> of, right, sometimes I, I just, I'm, I, I just, uh, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's, I, uh, I'm, uh, so, but that open mic is actually quite fun. Oh. You get a bottle of water. You got to pay five bucks, but okay. uh, it's not bad. Um, well, anyway, so, so, I, and I don't want to give away any details that okay. would make anyone feel bad because I'm yeah. happy that I was asked to do it in it, yeah. in it, and it was a fun show. Once Here's you got the there, thing. I always complain. I'm like, oh my god, if what did I say yes to? And then I get there, and it's it's fun, <laughs> right. right? Right, right. So I have to be dragged to joy. <laughs> Uh, so, but I get to, to one comedy venue where it's at and the person says, oh, it's not here. Oh, I did and, follow and I go, this on the text oh, chain. Oh, okay. And then, then I, I figure, oh, it must be over there because they have similar names. Right. So I go over there and they're like, no, it's not here. I think it's over there. So then I go back to, yeah, then I go back to the original place and it is there. And so now instead of being 15 wow. minutes early, I'm 10 minutes late, 
to well, a show where I'm not doing stand up. I don't understand how you could walk into a venue like when you walk into a bar and you're like, "There's stand up here, right?" And in this case, you're like, "Is this show here?" And the and the people at the front don't know. Well, so they weird. thought it was someplace. It, it, there was a yeah, there you was know, and everyone's working for free. Okay, so no one's it, whatever. Right. The whole idea of uh, working for I'm free. Saying, I'm not blaming. I'm just saying. Uh, that on top of everything this week, I was like, oh, I'm just being asked to leave show business. <laughs> I'm, I'm, people are asking me to leave. Does it feel like there's a, a, a terrible non cry for help? <laughs> it's a cry to get out. <laughs> they want you to get out. And they um, and I realize that this is a lot of comics life all the time. Like yeah. Working these hard rooms. Yes. Like if you're a new, it's fucking brutal. I yes. get it. It's a little more brutal when you're 31 years in. Right. And that's when it, that's the only time it's actually worse. Right. And you and and you're feeling it this week. It's not that it, this doesn't belittle what they I, feel. I come home to nothing to make me forget it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then I was thinking, you know, like I'm. Here's what I've been able to do successfully for 30 years is is comedy has masked a problem I've had my whole life, which is an inability to hang out with people or be social, right? Okay. So as a teenager, this I always felt podcast. like I was a loser, right? Because I couldn't, I, w- I never went out on Saturday nights with my friends. I just didn't know how to, I couldn't do it, right? Right. And then I became a comic and now I'm, I have something to do every Saturday night. Right, you're out. I'm never a loser. I'm always right. doing stand-up. Right. New Year's Eve, I always, I always have plans, right? Yeah. I'm never a loser. Wow. But that's only because of stand-up comedy. And right. if you take stand-up away from me, I'm like, I can't do anything. I I, I, I don't know how to go out to dinner with people. I don't know how to just, just hang out. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. Right. Right. Like I was supposed to, I went to somebody, she, this, this woman um, invited me to uh, a barbecue at her house. Yeah. Right. And I didn't even know her very well. Right. And she invited me. So yeah. I went and it was really, it was fun. Yeah. I couldn't stay very long. My, and then I'm like. Emotionally or because of your schedule? Because of the schedule. Okay. <laughs> and then and I'm like, I'm going to return the favor. And that was like three years ago. Because yeah. I don't even know how to throw a party. I don't know how to go just have everyone bring donuts. And like, and, what do I do? What do you, right. what's everyone do? Do I have enough chair? Like I, and there's, <laughs> but I don't no. know. So, and, and I'm. I, this is a very real thing. Yes. Yeah. I think comedy can really uh, help you. It saved you. your life yes, in many ways. Yes, but it can help you. It can help you. And then all of a sudden, you know, when you have a night off, you're like, what am I? 15 years ago. I had the same thing. Yeah. It's 15 or 16 years ago. I decided, I mean, what happened to you was 13 years ago you got pregnant by accident Mm -hmm. and then you uh had now you have the you got the boy Mm -hmm. um about 15 years ago i decided that i would like a boyfriend that i wanted a whole life because i too had no i didn't even have any friends right in high school or junior high or grade school or any of that so when i went when i went to college i essentially I remember a friend of mine who I still have from, who lives up in the Bay Area. The, the first time I met her, I was she inspires sort of like really serious talk. My friend Mary Skinner, mm-hmm. and I remember the first conversation I had with her. I said, "You know, the great thing is that I can reinvent myself. I can be a different person from I was in high school." And she goes, "Yeah, yeah, you could. What do you want to be?" And I said, she, did, she didn't notice that you had that. Well, you felt like well you she had. didn't know me before she had oh, just oh, met oh, me. Oh, I see. And she was like, well, what, what do you want to be now that you weren't then? And I said, well, I, I want friends and I want to do things. And she's like, okay, we can be friends. And then we were friends <laughs> and we're still friends. Right. And, um, but I didn't know how to, and then I started doing stand up like six months later and I, and it was like, it's, and it still is to some extent, it's like heroin. Where you're like, this is all I want to do. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about stand up for hours every day, mm-hmm. and I want uh, to. And so, about 15 years ago, I was like, I am sick of getting laid. I am sick of getting drunk, and I am sick of not having anything but stand up comedy to either be happy about or be devastated about. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, I did online dating, and I wasn't good at it, and I kept doing it, and um. And I ended up 
meeting someone. But what I had to do is I had to shake up my damn life because I wanted a whole life. Stand up comedy saved my life. I genuinely believe that. Yeah, me too. But it does not replace all of the different parts of it. So um, I am not still not very good socially. And that's why I have Comedy Brunch, where uh, I have a lot of people and um, I am acquaintances. Mm-hmm. Like I don't have I, have, I have some close friends and I have people that I can hang out with for hours, but that is a learned fucking skill <laughs> over right. the last 15 years. And um, we can have barbecue. You got a pool. I know. I'll help you. I'll help you out. You want to have a barbecue? It's fucking 95 degrees right now. It's 95 degrees in this in this garage. It is very warm. How? Where are we doing? 53. Seven more minutes. Mm-hmm. So in the next episode, do you want to have a real conversation about... Um, Never. Okay. You've already lost oh, me. That's right. Well, f- the first 22 minutes of this thing was real conversation. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, and I forgot my notebook, so we can't even talk about stand-up. It's very sad. You I can't wanna... remember anything from... Well, I, I do, but I was, I've been wanting to do Joke Machine a lot lately. Mm-hmm. Like, and I've scheduled Erin uh, Foley to do Joke Machine, but she keeps... Like, she got a, last minute, I think she got food poisoning. She had to cancel. Carmen Morales will do Joke Machine with me. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, and I did it with her and Gary Peterson. I'm trying not to be outraged at the name Joke Machine. Oh. It's just uh, the way we... Mm-hmm. just It's just riffing back and forth. To, right. Yeah. Writing. Yeah. Writing. Just, yeah. Well, it doesn't have to have a... Joke you, Machine? It's like it's like a... It's fun. It's like a, con- a, a, thi- a contraption you invented. It is a contraption I invented. And it's super <laughs> fun. It's real good. It's got it's a uh, it's it's like your TV for some reason. Uh, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of imagery, mm. doesn't it? it? It paints a picture. Do you know what the, the picture it paints? Is that we're getting work done, but it's also super fun. That's yeah. the picture it paints for me, mm-hmm. and uh, and it paints for other people. No, who I like think that's play. great. Though uh, I will say, Maria's yeah. been doing this thing uh, where she uh, <laughs> she's like, I will buy you a scone. And a cup of coffee if you listen to my hour. Oh, she's been doing that for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. She's been doing that for a while. And then yeah. people um, who can't afford to go to the show, because the tickets are like 35 40 bucks now wow. to go see Maria. Whoa. And they will meet her at a coffee shop during the day on a Friday or a Saturday. Wow. D- d- does she do that when she goes to... When she goes on the road, like yeah, she lands in Dayton. I'm going to do a show this afternoon. So we, uh, we always get there the day before, right? Because um, it just no, it just that's the way the to travel. do it. Yeah, that's the way to do it. And so she's got the day. So she wakes up eleven, twelve, meets somebody for coffee and a and a donut or whatever, and does her hour at that person. Sometimes it's a comic. Sometimes, and she just puts it on Twitter. She's like, anybody going to be in Dayton? And want to do a one-on-one show? Has she? Does she take the first person that replies? No, I think there's some there's some filtering that yeah. happens. And um, has she ever met with someone who made her feel unsafe? No. Oh, that's cool. No, she's uh, met with some people where she's like, I like it when they laugh a lot. <laughs> I was like, really? Like, like they're watching comedy? Yeah. No, I, you're not wrong. And um, so. But I will say that uh, it has cut into Maria and I doing Joke Machine. Yeah. Because she gets to practice the hour, and then she has to lie down and, oh, sure. uh, and, and take a break, and then sort of do notes on whatever happened there. And so in Dayton, I was like, I literally, this, I said to her, do you want me to sit through it? Sit out through it. Sit through it. That's what I said out loud to Maria Bamford. I should be so lucky. And I do sit through it when I always watch her set. She's yeah. one of the people that I don't leave the room. Yeah. That I want to hear the new version. Right, right, right. Because she's the greatest comic working today. Yeah. She writes, she's got these, and Gary Peterson wrote a line for her. And Gary Peterson and Carmen and I did a did a, a, a round robin joke machine. And Gary wrote a very funny line for me. But I have to. It's an act out, and I don't do. I do some act outs, but I and and I re, I think as as we go into my twilight years here, I'm going to be doing more and more mugging. Uh, but the uh, uh, <laughs> but it, it's uh, I um, I'm supposed to act like uh, Godzilla. 
and I haven't mm. been able. I've tried it once at a at just a, a sort of a showcase show in town one time, and I didn't have the guts to do it in Dayton because I couldn't uh, I couldn't get to the joke. You never you ever it's a twenty minute set. Yeah. And I just couldn't get there. I was busy working on the first half of it, and I couldn't get to this third part of it. You, oh, you know what? I was in when I was in Houston. I, I there's this physical thing I do in one of my jokes, right? And I thought, let me just that thing where you do it like ten times. That's annoying, and fifteen times it's funny. <laughs> yes. I'm like, let me just see if I can do it fifteen times. <laughs> And I think I bailed at 10. <laughs> Did they laugh, like, stop laughing, and then laugh again? No, and then you well, bailed? No, they didn't start again. They oh, stopped. Shit. They laughed. They stopped. Yep. And then... And you bailed. And I couldn't take it. You and couldn't take it. I hate my, the silence. My, my total respect for comics who can take it. Yeah. I, I don't... I'm not that kind of person. I can't that, take that. that Tig Notaro pushing the stools, stools? Yes. Set? Yeah. I could never do that. I yeah, could never, no. and I just mm-hmm. admire her so much for being able to. I think when she did it on Conan too, I think the yeah, problem did. was that the floors were so waxed or something, and oh, it didn't make it the mic'd? noise they were in. Right? Was it mic'd enough? Well, no, no, no. Like it wouldn't make a noise because the floors were pretty squeaky yeah, yeah. clean or something. I don't know. It didn't work. Like, like the noise wasn't what she needed. If you watch that in retrospect, though, like if you watch it now, yeah. it's super funny. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it may not have it may not have hit in the moment, but it was really really funny. Oh, it may have hit in the moment. So, oh, we're done. I, oh, it did. Two minutes. Two minutes. Ugh. So, one. oh, one minute. Okay. We're doing it. Yeah. And uh, wait, don't gonna... we have to do another Max Con? Uh, I was gonna just put one in. Oh, okay. Just put one in. That's okay. it. Max Fun, you guys. They're our network. <laughs> <laughs> that work? Did that work? Oh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> All right, bye. MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture Artist owned Audience supported